Well, we're back with the breakfast, and always on Fridays, we'd like to talk sports just briefly before we join the newsroom. And uh, this morning, Africa's top-ranked table tennis star, Aruna Kaudry, has moved up one spot from 14th to 13th in the latest International Table Tennis Federation World Ranking for Men's Single. Now, this comes after Kaudry's quarterfinal finish at the just-concluded WTT Singapore Smash, where he became the first African to reach the quarter final of the competition. Meanwhile, other Nigerians like Taiwo Mati dropped three points in the latest ranking for men with 17-year-old ranked 101 in the world. And in the women's single, Fatima Bello dropped seven points to place 70, uh, 72 or 72nd, while Ofyong Edem lost three places to end the mounted 136 uh, a boss today, Odun Soya, also lost three points. Spots to end the month at 243. Just as Cecilia Akpan is also now around 276 after losing two steps. We have Ofyong Edem, who is uh, joining us this morning. Uh, of course, she dropped like three points. Uh, Ofyong, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yes, please. So let's share your thoughts on the recent ranking, the ITT. F uh, ranking and of course looking at uh, the men's single and also the women's single. Uh, Aruna has actually uh, gone up the right there and he still maintained his status for Africa and also uh, the, the general ranking, especially when you have Nigerians, including yourself. What are your thoughts on this? Um, first of all, I would like to start with Aruna because um, I think the ranking, I think there's um, a little fourth because already he played in the quarterfinal. He should be in top 10, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't know how they do the ranking because playing a tournament does not guarantee you to have a good ranking. I, If I could remember, Mati Taiwo, this, the, uh, this year he has played about three or four tournaments and he's dropping. So for us table tennis player, we don't really know how they, they do the ranking because sometimes it's very confusing. Like a lot of players, uh, I, will, I will use Sarah Mofuli, for instance. She has played more than seven tournaments and she's still dropping in the ranking. So for me, it's quite strange. I don't know, should be in top 10. And every other player, like if you have the opportunity to participate in the tournament, of which is very difficult these this, this days because because of the high cost of the tournament. If you have to play a tournament, you have to spend nothing less than 1,500 1, or 1,800 euros, which is very difficult. So I think they should look into the ranking because I think something is not just right. However, for other players like uh, Fatima, it's quite unfortunate because she had the opportunity to be in a very good ranking, but the problem is she needed a little push from the from the the ministry or the Nigerian Table Tennis Federation. Likewise, I myself, I won't really talk about myself because I have been there, I have played, but all these young players also, they need a little push because already they are there. You can't do it on your own. If it's... Um, um, about table tennis, you need you need a sponsor. You need somebody to push you. This is why you see that Aruno is doing very well because he has all the support with all his effort also. It's not really easy, I must say. Hmm. Um, uh, I think at some time last year you were in, you know, around 112. Um, and now you 89, I think. 89, yes, 89. Okay, and then yes. towards the end of the year, you went to 112, then dropped to 115. You know, now we're seeing the slide. What accounts for for your situation? You, you're a good tennis player. Um, you know, what accounts uh, for this this slide for you personally? Yeah, for me, it's, I I am not sad because uh, there is nothing I can do. If you're not attending tournament, of course, you will drop. It's quite unfortunate. The only tournament we can really, really um, hope for and really be sure of playing is all African Games, uh, Commonwealth Games, and probably if you qualify for Olympic Games, okay, you can play. But as outside that, if you have to play other tournaments like Protoss, like all these Open, German Open, this, that, that, 
you need a lot of uh, fun to go around. And now it's quite difficult because the uh, WTT is not like before. Before now, you can play a tournament with 400. You can decide to 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 pay your own hotel. And now it's like a mandatory. If you have to go for a tournament, you have to pay three days compulsory hotel. Even if you lose from the beginning, it's, it doesn't matter. You must stay for three days and you have to pay for three nights. So it's, it's quite uh, complicated and very difficult for people like us to play a lot of tournaments. So in that case, we have to be dropping in the ranking and that's it. Oh. So, so you're saying that, you know, the dropping in the ranking is not because of your capacity to perform, but it's based on uh, your appearance or performance. I mean, your availability at these games. Is, is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Because sometimes even if you, you play, it's not a guarantee that you, you will go up in your ranking. For instance, if, if, you, are, if you are like in top 30 or or top 50 and you are being um, seated in a tournament, if you cannot move a step forward, of course you will drop. Or sometimes you don't drop, sometimes you might even gain. So it's, it's a little bit complicated. And also if you don't play a tournament at all, of course you will drop, for sure. If you're not going for a tournament, maybe two or three, of course you will drop. So mm. that's it. What are, what are your plans for, for this year? Um, you know, uh, you have tournaments lined up that you would like to attend. You're still, you know, uh, trying to see how you can raise funds to attend these tournaments. What are your plans for the year? You know, and what's the best way you think you can you can you can uh, uh, um, strategize this year to rise up the rankings? Yeah, this year I I had a lot of plans this year. Like I wanted to start with the German Open, and I tried to raise fund. Fund it was difficult. I had to cancel it. And also, I was supposed to be in Singapore. I had to cancel it also due to uh, my passport uh, uh, wasn't valid, um, was expiring, sorry. So also, I have an African Cup coming up in Kenya. So we have a lot of tournament lined up. Oh. And also, I have another thing I'm planning also for myself and for the people in my community. I have a foundation which I am using to to help the children in my community. I'm going, to, I'm going to host a tournament to to bring all these children together to play table tennis because it's a very beautiful game. And I want to create awareness. I don't want the game to end with me in my community. After um, looking at what I have to do and all the plans I had this year, all the things I'm planning this year, to play tournament, we have African games coming up. And also, all these things requires a lot of money, you know? You can't just have plans and at the end of the day, you don't have uh, fun to execute them. So we have a lot of tournament this year. We have Pro Tours, African Cup, African Championship. We even have Nigerian tournament coming up in June. So all this tournament, I will really ask the sport ministry. Of course, I know they have a lot of sport to to cater for, and also I know they can't do it all alone. So it's is to be to be better for private sectors to join force and to try to help uh, players right. in Africa. Well, uh, Ophion, we need to take yes, a breather yeah. with you now, as we, uh, you know, we've been told that we have another guest, our guest joining us, John, and we're, I hope I got that correctly, he's a sports analyst. John, if you can hear me, thank you so much for being part of the breakfast this morning. Yeah, thank you, Messi. All right, then, so quickly. Yeah, thank you, Messi, I can hear you. All right, so, I, I mean, uh, today, Nigeria will be playing Guinea-Bissau for that Afcon qualifiers. Your thoughts exactly? Uh, so far, if you look at the table, where you know for Group A, we're already uh, six points ahead of others in that particular group. And do you think, if you look at you know uh, uh, antecedent over time, we've actually played Guinea-Bissau a two-zero to that one? Uh, what do you expect for this game? And do you think that the lineup is quite impressive? And uh, do you see us, you know, taking it home? Oh, 
Okay, yeah, looking at the game against Guinea Bissau today, um, honestly, to be, to be honest with you, I think it's going to be a very great game for Nigeria. And also, it's an advantage that we're playing it with at the Moshida Viola Stadium in Abuja. So, I expect the players, I expect the team to do very, very well. But uh, regarding our recent form, you know, um, since uh, our, our coach, Joseph Osero, took over, it has been there's been an up and down moment with the national team and uh, most recently there's been more of a down moment. Uh, we know that when he took over we, we had a hundred percent record in terms of our group stage performances at the AFCON at the um, AFCON qualifiers. But after that, Algeria and Portugal, we all lost those games and we lost in uh, such a, a difficult fashion. So it's been a very, 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 very uh, down moment for the national team. But going into today's game, I expect it to be a very, very interesting encounter. We know the way the Guinea Bissau team plays. We know that they are a team that likes to rely so much on counter attack. Uh, but we know uh, the, the, the strength at which we possess in terms of our firepower going forward. We have the most informed strike in the world at the moment uh, in terms of our Victor Timen. We have Alex Iwobi that has been doing very well for Everton this season. Uh, we also have Chukweze, who was nominated just for uh, the player of the month at uh, La Liga. He has been doing fantastically well for his national team side. And before I forget, we have Ademola Lukman as well. So our, our fire power going forward in terms of our offensive fire power, we are very good. We should have enough to defeat this team. My only problem, my only doubt is our defense. Our defense has been top to top so far. It has not been something to be uh, relied upon. You know, we, we've seen, uh, although we have players like Calvin Bassi, Guma, we have players that they've been doing pretty well for their national team, for their um, club side this season. But it has been, there's been a really, uh, it has been a, a part in the national team that has been very, very difficult for us to um, get a hold of. But I expect the match today to be a very, very interesting encounter. I expect us to get the victory. And uh, the players also need to know that if they get a victory today in Abuja, uh, and also if they get the, a victory in the return leg to on Monday, that automatically gives us a qualification to the uh, to the competition at uh, at Cote d'Ivoire next year. So I expect this game to be a walkover, honestly. We expect the game to be a walkover. Um, uh, the Ghanaians yesterday almost uh, uh, lost, dropped two points at home against Angola. Um, some would argue that uh, it's, it's it's too uh, close, you know, looking at the fact that the teams are just coming back together for the first time after the World Cup qualifiers uh, and then the friendly matches before the World Cup, that maybe it's too early to tell how much they can gel, you know, for it to be a walkover. So I, I'm not being too optimistic, you know, and that's the number two. No, I, I, no yeah. I, I, Okay, yeah, go on, please, go on. Yeah, I don't think I'm being too optimistic. Um, I look at the current crop of players that we have at our disposal. Yes, Joseph Osero has a lot to do in terms of winning the Nigerian fans over uh, because so far, I must say, the, uh, the friendly matches which we played after our qualifiers, our first two qualifiers for qualifying games, was nothing to write home about. But this group of players have played together for a long time. And uh, if you look at the current uh, players that we brought into the squad this time around, especially in terms of our attacks, we have players that are on form, not just for uh, the, their club size, but I also uh, we also have Osimen, who is also one of the leading goal scorers in these African uh, qualifiers. So I expect this team to knowing fully well that they need to put on a performance for Nigerians and they need to steal the game today and on Monday. So I expect, it to be, I expect them to go into this game knowing that they need to be full trust or they need to do everything possible to win this game. I look at the Guinea Bissau team. I know they're a very solid team. They too know that they need to get a win today to stand a chance to qualify. And uh, looking at the, the way they played their first their, their game against uh, 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 Syria alone and also the game against uh, uh, South Tome, yes, they are a side that are very difficult uh, to, to play against. But I also expect the Nigerian factor and also the home advantage factor to, to work in Nigeria's favor. Yeah, yeah, but but would you also take out the fact that some of these players like uh, Victor Simen, 
uh, this person's play for, you know, uh, the international club, if you want to say, they don't just play. So uh, you also hear some person say, hey, you need to preserve those legs for, uh, you know, the club, no injuries. And over time, we see that the performance outside of the Nigerian club is always on top of the knot. So do you think that these players, like you have mentioned, would give in 100, especially when they also have their interest on the other side? And of course, a take home, you can't even compare. I expect them, to, well, that is meant for the players, but uh, uh, judging through the, the past interviews Victor Osime granted to the media the, the last few days, he seems, optimi he seems very optimistic to perform for Nigeria. He wants to replicate that uh, club uh, form to the national team level. Whether he'll be able to do that, we don't know. We'll have to see and uh, watch him play by 5 p.m. But I think these players, they know that they have to prove to Nigerians that they are ready that they've forgotten about everything that happened last year regarding the qualifiers for the um, the World Cup and missing out on the World Cup. They they need they know that they need to prove to Nigerians that we are ready. We know we know what we we have to do. We know the job we have to do, and we are ready to put on a show for you, Nigerians. Nigeria is a very passionate country when it comes to football, and the players, I'm sure, they know that right now. They know they know that if they if they don't give their all, Nigerians are going to scrutinize them, and I'm sure I'm very very sure that uh, the, the performance that we've seen from our top players, especially the ones in Europe, that the way, the way they have been performing this past, this past few months in Europe, I, I expect them to replicate that same form uh, right. to the national team. All right. But it's all, left, so it's, all left, it's all left to the, the players. All right, John, John, thank you. We have to go, but Ofiong is still standing by. So, Ofiong, is, is she still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Here. Okay, Ophion, a final word from you to corporate Nigeria, you know, for those who are listening who are uh, on top of the corporate world in this country, regarding yourself and your colleagues. Just very short, please. All right, it seems we have Sorry, a... I didn't get that. Okay, a final word from you to the, the business community in Nigeria. You talked about the fact that yourself and your colleagues have needs as far as attending tournaments is concerned. So what are you, what's your message to the corporate um, establishments in Nigeria? Well, I would like to um, plead with them to join the NTTF and also the ministry to see how to support the uh, sport. We have a whole lot of talent in Nigeria. All we need is um, support from the private sectors and also the ministry, because the NTTF has the Nigerian Table Tennis Federation. They can't do it on their own. Like I said, the ministry also have a lot of sports. They won't focus on uh, table tennis. So if we have these private uh, sectors. I think the game will move uh, and the players will be able to have the opportunity to go around and to improve their, their game in the game, in table tennis. So I would like to plead with them yeah. to come and support table tennis for the future. All right. All right. Ophira Dem and John Enua, thank you so much for your time. Uh, pleasure having you both on The Breakfast. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Well, we have to go. Mercy has been a very, very uh, uh, interesting week as far as uh, activities in the country. And indeed, on the breakfast, I can send. And we look forward to coming your way again next week. Don't we, Mercy? Definitely. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. We will be joining the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Please, we ask that you stay with us. It's also fair to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to be part of our conversation in case you missed out on any part of it. Uh, we're also at, uh, on YouTube at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Bukbo. Have a great morning. And my name is Kofi Bartels. Good morning. <laughs>